Oh, oh, there, 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 there you go. There she goes. <laughs> Woo! Oh, Woo! Heads will roll. Heads oh. will roll. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay! Okay, what are you crazy girls doing? Hi, World Doll Day friends. Uh, this is Kathy Turner and Bell Ann Curry. Uh, I'm back to talk to you about my favorite topic, China Head Dolls. And we are coming to you from the Carmel Doll Shop and Grovian Museum Gorgeous. in California. And today I have brought to share with you uh, my collection of Boo Boo China Heads. And these, these girls, some of them began life living in, amongst high society upstairs, and some of them played with the children of, you know, ordinary people downstairs. But all of them have suffered life's heartaches, and they're now more downstairs <laughs> dolls. They're working girls now. Uh, they work for me to help teach and show uh, all the different ins and outs of these heads. Uh, there was a time when China doll collectors were known as head hunters. And that was because they would, you know, take heads off of bodies and they would just collect the heads on the shelf. Uh, so a lot of China heads anyway don't have their original bodies anymore, unfortunately. Um, none of these had original bodies. And so now they just live lives as, uh, to teach. And Bell Ann, uh, I'm going to start over at this end and I'm going to say, do you, do you recognize perhaps any of these dolls who might have made some of these off the top of your head? Hertwig. There you go. And I think we might have another one, another couple here and or other companies that, that made no, that that's, type. That's correct. They're not this one here is uh, a known Hertwig model. There you go. Uh, they did often have these kind of shoulder plate decorations. They love to do these fancy bonnets and hats. This one's a particularly fancy one. And large. And large. Uh, it has had a rough life. Yeah. But a, a really a nice model. Uh, and it's one to look out for, you know, intact. This one is, this one started out is a model that was one of their basic lowbrows, and they started doing this bit where they would embellish them to make them a little snazzier, and they started adding necklaces. Now, I think somebody has added a plastic gem to this <laughs> its original gem came out, and I think somebody glued that in there. Uh, another version that I have seen in the Hertwig catalog, so I think this is probably another Hertwig model, though it's kind of odd that they would have two lowbrow versions. But this one's kind of a more of a ball-like head, mm -hmm. very round. Mm -hmm. uh, but tentatively also a Hertwig. This is a curiosity. This one, of course, is not uh, colored. It's just a basic white bisque. Now, it looks very much like another Hertwig lowbrow, but I am not entirely sure whether it is actually by Hertwig. We tend to uh, assign all these kind of dolls to Hertwig, but there were other companies that were making these kinds of dolls too that are not that well known. Right. So we're not 100% sure. This is a Hertwig model. Um, this one, they can't think of all this, a Phrygian cap. And I believe this was its uh, American, um, Miss America version, kind of a, a celebratory thing, which you can't see because it had like stars and red, white, and blue stuff going on on the shoulder plate. That's missing. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, this little guy here. The Hertwig also made some, some black china and bisque dolls as well very ethnically obviously meant to be a, a person of African origin. And then we have some that I'm not sure are Hertwig. This one is a variation on a flat top, very bold, number six on the back. I'm not sure who made this one. It has kind of the same kind of face with these little 
pursed lips, same kind of style of painting of the eyes and features, but I'm not, not sure. And it's okay not to be sure. This one's a total unknown. I just put it over here. I don't know. This one has a chipped bow. It's a, mo a model that I very seldom seen. It has pierced ears. I don't think Hertwig did pierced ears. So it's just over here as an unknown. But the quality is sort of on par with Hertwig dolls. Now, now Bell Ann, here's another one. Do you, do you recognize anything in this area that you think you might know right. who the maker is? Let's, no, this is not my area. Oh, I know, I'm testing you here. Just, just one, any one of them. A, B, G. No, no, I don't think so. Cling. No, I don't oh, think so. Uh oh, I'm uh, strike two. Strike. <laughs> well, I should, no, I should go no back. No dinner and, for you. Yeah, I should go back and hide behind my. No, not at all. Again. That this one is this one here. They're I, very unusual. I do not know who made this. Ah, one. there you this, go. This one is is uh, she's an anomaly. Uh, she has a big head bonk. That's why she's oh. in the in the bumps land. Very unusual face. Could it be maybe content bomb? I don't know. Um, there you go. But it's a hairstyle that I, you know, I haven't really seen Unusual. very often. It has some weird little braid down here mm -hmm. and some sort of weird. Almost from the 40s. Well, I was going to say, doesn't, seen... doesn't this look almost like a Marcel Wave kind yeah, of thing this leading is, we've into got that? something going on But here. she's not from the 40s, obviously. No, she's but, earlier. Yeah, I don't know who made this one. So sometimes you run into these dolls and you have to say, nah, I don't know who well, made it. Well, none of them were marked. There were hundreds of companies knocking out these dolls at the mm -hmm. turn of the last century. And companies that we don't haven't even well identified That's yet. That's right. Companies we haven't and identified. And then there was a little war that kind of... Mm -hmm. yeah. Two wars. Two wars, yeah. yes. Yeah. Now this one we believe is by Content Bohm. Uh, it has a V there, which is Roman numeral five. Uh, very large earlobes with very large pierced holes through them, which mm -hmm. is something that Content Bohm kind of liked to do. Mm -hmm. uh, the it has a little mark inside, which would okay. be a painter's tick mark, and some inscribed marks, which would be from the modeler. Mm -hmm. Again, those are not company identifiers. It is pressed into the mold. I believe that they often call this one the Countess Dagmar. That's just a, you know, a collectorism name. Right, right. But uh, she has a headband, this mass of ringlets drawn back there. So pretty fancy hairdo. Right. And then we have some others that I just I just don't know. This is unknown land here. Yeah, unknown land. Unknown land. I don't know. And look at these interesting. The piercing just goes right into yes, her head. Yes, this one has pierced tears into the head. She has a molded necklace with a cross. She and a neat hairstyle. She has a very interesting hairstyle with a bow of hair. I think that's no. supposed to be hair in a bow. And then, you know, something and going on something on top. there's something else going on top. And it was also cheaper not to incorporate an, another color. Yes. And they then she has a little X inscribed there from the modeler, and that's, I don't know if there was a mark there at one time that's kind of obscured by damage. I mm -hmm. can't really tell. She's had a hard life, but she's still here. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. still a working girl doing her job. Mm -hmm. Maybe someday we will find out. Now, here's a cautionary tale. Mm. She was in perfect condition until she landed in my hands and I dropped her. Oh, it no. happens. And then she it happens. happens. And right around. Glass dollies. Uh, yeah. It bad Kathy. I know. Bad, I bad. know. Because no. she's really nice. She is and nice. quite unusual. Yes. She's a beauty. And the little sparkles. That's original. Yeah. This, this is, oh, here. This is actually a lustrous glaze. <gasps> You know, oh. you know how that old uh, uh, phrase where they would say, oh, the doll has a pink luster complexion. Yes. Yeah, no, they don't have pink luster. None of the Chinas have pink luster complexion. Interesting. Because that's a metallic glaze. Ah. Uh, but she has up here in this little, it, it almost looks like brains, doesn't right. it? It's weird. It looks like brains. <laughs> but it's a rough I don't know, that's it's kind a, of the color. I know, it's a rough one. We've got some odd color combos we going We do. On. We have like turquoise and orange, which I guess, and, and purple. purple. That's very French. Ah. ah, but she's a German I know, girl. But they wanted to co copy, but, copy the French. But this is, you know, everybody has boo-boos. It happens. 
you know, well, and, and you just weep right. a little bit and you move on. And that's now right. she, you have to put it away for a while. I did put it away yeah. for a while. And, and, and let the sting go. The sting. No, we understand. And now she's a working girl. What we can I say? We all have been she, there. She's out on the streets. <laughs> oh. And this one I did not break. She came to me this way. Okay. I'm only responsible for that one. But <laughs> she has a beautiful face with all these flowers. Again, I do not know who made this right. one here. I do believe the flower combination has, um, that has some significance of, um, uh, uh, probably made for, it was probably made for France. Because oh, that's because there. the orange and blue mm -hmm. and some gold? Yes. So it was perhaps made for uh, commemorating something yes. in France. Yeah. But she's another, I love that hairstyle with all that decoration. She's marked with a 14. Sometimes the dolls from Posnick, which is either Everline or Contenbaum, sometimes did have numbers like that or Roman numerals. But I don't know if, she's seemingly too high a quality for Contenbaum, which were kind of middle of the road. Mm -hmm. But Everline was a little better, so maybe, but I don't know. I just, I'm not feeling it, I'm not sure. Speaking of Content Bohm and Everline, we have these shards down here. Wouldn't you like to go digging, Bellin? Yeah. In Germany Are you and kidding? come up with some stuff? These bring me a shovel. Bring me a shovel. Let's get dirty. Yeah. Do you know you really don't even need a shovel? You just, just kick the dirt. Kick the dirt. Up they That's, come. Well, they've been doing this in Germany for a very, very long but time. But they yes. also made them for a very long time. So you just keep kicking and you keep finding. Uh, so these were found in the town of Posnick, which is where both Eberline and Content Bohm were in business, very close to each other. Mm -hmm. So that means the dump right. had dumping material from both companies. So you really can't say. And these, some of these, uh, I mean, I would never guess that this would have come from someplace like, like Content Bohm. It just huh. doesn't. This is a little side parted boy, male head with exposed ears. Hmm. And this one here, you know, looks like what we would call a Dolly Madison type, yeah. another collector name with a little bow on the top, which again, I would, I would have thought that looks more like a model that was made by ABG, but yet here it is turning up in Posnick, Germany. Right. This one here, another unusual hairstyle. Look at that braid coming down the back. Mm -hmm. Another unusual hairstyle. Again, this clown, smiling clown. I know Hertwig made a model like that, but here we are. I think it's different from the one they made though. This one has pretty wide wings of hair out to the side. A flat top basically has a little Number there on the back, one slash zero. And this one looks kind of like, oh, it's not an Alice type, four slash zero, this one says. Not exactly an Alice type, it's some other form of hairstyle. But these are very interesting when you, you know, you can compare them and, and speculate, but, and they're, but you can't rely 100% on these shards because you don't know, for all you know, they might have been getting an order from another porcelain company that said, hey, we, we need to make a thousand of these. We don't have time. Can you make some of this model for us, too? They did do that. Well, I was going to show you this doll. I only brought one shoulder head because I only had one that was in the boo-boo land. Uh, that's, you can't see a mark in this one, but this is a Dressel and Kister head, which is course they made these later in the early 1900s but she's particularly fancy but while you can't see it very well she does have a repair a fairly well done repair on the shoulder plate and I think also probably on the feather there uh, but they did beautiful work very fine porcelain and they were known for having these striations in the hair uh, their company mark is a blue kind of a shepherd's crook, a bishop's crook, excuse me, not a shepherd's crook, a bishop's crook, crozier they called it, Mark. 
that's usually inside, but because this one has been restored and painted inside, you can't see a mark anymore. But, but this is a known piece. Yeah, yeah, it is known to be theirs. And, and it's just the characteristics of it, you know, with this hair right. striations, it also Fantastic sc quality. screams right. their handiwork. This is something I don't think it would ever be for a child. No. No, this, this would have been for, for an adult, you know. Right. You know, on their dressing table, Correct, it might right. be on top jewelry box, something. Kind of, right. Now, one of the most prolific. Con I bet you know who made these. Oh my! Oh, you're going to you're going to make me make a. Well, let uh, me give you a hint. Give me a hint. One company. Oh well, that's very tiny. Let's see here. Um, let me take a look at their little faces. You're gonna kill me. Cling. No. A B G. Yes, yes. You gotta know try number two. You know, that's the thing is when it comes to cling and A B G, I I start to, to, to I and I, I get that. Um, yeah. I think one of the differences is uh, cling tends to have a, a more going on with the eyes. Ah. Um, so starting with one of the earlier ones, this would be an early A B G. Turned shoulder, very, very obviously turned shoulder, had glass eyes. Mm -hmm. They often had these little anatomical divisions between the upper arm and the chest. Um, you, you can see what I'm talking about there, I think. It's not just dirt, it's a shell. <laughs> right. Uh, beautiful inset blue glass eyes. She had these little feathered eyebrows, wonderfully well done lovely ringlets, very much a child. You can see that's mm -hmm. not an adult woman, that is a child. And more ringlets there, a nice side view, very damaged inside as you can see. This one is poured. Uh, they were one of the early users of that poured technology. And you can also see that she has a slight pink tint outside compared to the white bisque inside. Oh. So it is a, it does have a slight tint. So that's a nice early one. Another early one, I think would be this little child. Again, even though this part of it's missing, you can see the indentation for the shoulder plate there. Mm -hmm. And this is again, a child. Now, interesting, they gave it pierced ears, even though they, I guess, pierced the ears of their little ones they back then. They pierced yeah. ears of the little children yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Probably gave them little coral earrings to keep them safe from injury. Yes. But beautiful. this one is very crisply modeled. I would love to have this intact, but alas, this is a street urchin now. Aww. <laughs> I know. She had a rough life. She just needs to stay downstairs. I know. Aww. And this girl uh, has a Alice type hairstyle, which with a headband here, another uh, I believe this is probably another ABG. If I get it wrong, somebody will tell me, but I believe she is. I think uh, uh, Kessner made one that was similar, and sometimes it's a little hard to tell them apart. And let's see, who should we, oh, let's go on over to this one. Uh, Michael Aww. liked this one. Um, this one would have had a China shoulder plate so that the head could swivel. And of course, I don't have the shoulder plate and she does have a little little boo-boo right there. But if I had the shoulder plate, I would definitely put this one together because you don't find this one that often. You sometimes find it in bisque with blonde hair. Hmm. I think a little bit more often than the China version. And this one's fairly large for this as well. I mean, that one, this one is just asking to have a little accident, isn't it? Yes, it kind of mm. is. Um, Notice how they have an unglazed section there for where it would have engaged with the, with the socket. I think, do we see number or No. No, I think it's, no. It's just? It's just unglazed there, huh. and it's a little speckled. Right. Little kiln issue there going on. But I, I really like She's that. really hat. rare looking. She's very uncommon. Yes. Um, this one here is a little bald ABG bisque. Very definitely a pink tint. You can see where there's mm. no coloring there. And this one happens to have the model number here. It says 568 with a hash mark and a one. So 568 is the model. The hash mark is, is something the ABG did. They would have the model number and a hash mark and then a size number. So if you see that kind of configuration of numbers, 
you can pretty much bet that it's an ABG. Now, moving further back, they got into some of their fancy models that they were making, let's say about 1870s into early 1880s. And she has a headband. She has pierced ears. She has lots of damage. <laughs> <laughs> but great modeling. But great modeling. At very poured, poured in the mold. Got a little inscribed mark mm -hmm. from the modeler and a painter's tick mark. But she doesn't have any model numbers. They started adding those a bit later, probably in the 1880s, which mm. means the one here that's marked probably is 1880s. Let's go back here to this one. This particular model was later um, imitated in, by the Japanese, and they made a reproduction. In fact, I should have grabbed it. I think you have one out yonder uh, with black hair that is one of those. Um, but she is a great model. This one has a very restored shoulder plate, which mm. has been so well done, you really, it's hard to tell. Get your black light out. Uh, oh, I know, you could yeah. do, it's marked 12, which would be the size, I believe, and it has a little painter's mark there. I really like this model, though. You can kind of tell how the shoulder plate has yellowed slightly. Yes. Which happens a lot with these kind of restorations. But it's a pretty well done one, so I've left it alone. This one was in your shop. This is in the Carmel doll shop, and I borrowed it because it is a very classic ABG face in a very large size. You could see the mouth with the little line in between the lips that they painted. That's typical of ABG. The iris of the eye with a little uh, dark line around it is also typical. Just the modeling is typical. The whole thing is just screams ABG. Uh, and then it just, she's just a nice, very nice, very large size flat top model. Really nice. And she could see that she probably was size 16. It says big. 16 is where the model are mm -hmm. inscribed there. Really nice. If you like her, Talk to Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. Call you. Um, and then we have uh, this one. She was, poor girl, she was decapitated at one time. Oh, these things happen. These things happen. I don't know what she did to deserve it, but, you know, maybe little brother. Maybe it was just a shelf top. Who knows? But anyway, she's, she's here as a working girl today. Uh, they often call this model curly top for obvious reasons. There are kind of variations where it comes down longer as well. Really nice ABG model. And you notice again, the same classic, the painting of the lips with that little darker line in between. Little smaller doll, so she doesn't have the line around the iris that the other one did. Can't really tell any markings because she's still got a lot of glue residue. Let's see who, and I didn't, this is another classic uh, model that you can frequently find of ABG. Who didn't I tell? Oh, this one here, I believe this is also an ABG, an earlier, a little bit earlier model. Probably similar era to this one. This one I put here somewhat speculatively. I'm not 100% sure but I think she probably is an ABG. She does have that, say, a similar little darker line there through the lips. Unusual hairstyle here. I don't know, you know, what's going on with that hair, but she's got all kinds of things piled on there. Pierced ears. Interesting doll, though. Yeah. Now, who was it who was known, Belen, as the king of dolls? Well, that'd be Kestner, I'm for and sure. And do, do you happen to see anybody here who might? There you go. Let's there's go. There's your Kestner. Well, there's a couple Kestners ah, down here. Let's see. So this one. Oops. I'm going to let my the expert this, take over on well, this. Well, do, do you see what might make you think this is a Kestner in the face? Well, let's see here. The... 
<laughs> How about the split in the lips? Yes, the white line between yes. the upper and the lower lip. That's right, like that, almost there you can see teeth. Yeah, that is a characteristic that they often painted their dolls that way. And the nostrils, what about them? Well, you've got ringed nostrils. Open circles, right? That's right. That is another characteristic very uh, cool. of their painting. Mind you, painting is a very superficial uh, thing and it can change, but that is something that often points to it being a Kessner product. And, you know, she's a very, you know, nice, sort of a basic doll from probably 1860s or so. Has a little of that pink yes, thing. Yes, she does. Now this one, originally, uh, I know Ann, Ms. Ann Coleman and I had put her in the ABG family, but I was looking at her. And what do you see going on with that face? Well, I see the ringed nostrils and I see the little separation in her lips. Exactly. And so I'm thinking we need to shift her. And this happens. I'm, that's why I want people to that's understand kind of interesting. that we are fallible. And sometimes we think one thing and then we change our minds and we, we move one from one category to the other. Um, it just is, you know, as we learn. And she has a restored shoulder plate, unfortunately, but she has a very nice molded necklace. And or could it be a situation where perhaps Kessner was selling these and someone came in and said, oh, this I like this idea. I'm going to bring well, this back to ABG. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Very, very uh, restored shoulder plate going sure. on there. No particular markings. And you can see the necklace going all the way around and back. This necklace is done in the mold, not applied, I believe. And then this little one, I think is probably, even though in this size, it doesn't have the open circle nostrils, I think it probably is a Kessner product because of the lip painting. Hmm. Though that's a bit of a slim lead to base it upon, I think it probably is. And, and this is our girl we were playing with, but I don't really think she's a Kessner. She just happens to be living here. She does seem to have a little bit of a line between the lips, but yeah. I don't necessarily think she's a Kessner. She's a player. She's a player. She's a player. There he is. We talked about her. I like her. her sharp nose. She does have a sharp nose. So I don't know for sure. Right. Okay, now I'm going to talk about these. Ooh. These. This was a company. Uh, you gonna play a guessing game? No, no, I she don't. doesn't want to Made play enough of a moron. No, not myself. at all. It's just not <laughs> you. Not your specialty. Uh, we all have. We have to specialize in these things. No. So this is a company that was not actually making dolls for a very long period of time, but they were making them fairly early. It's this Kloster and Vales Kloster Vale store. Wow. Um, and they had a thing about eyes, as you could see in this one. I love the face on this doll. I wish she was. She really is beautiful. Yeah. Too you bad, have to too love bad. Her like she is. Too bad, too bad, too bad, right? Yeah, right. But she's, look at the eyelashes. Can you see that? On the, around those really glass pretty. eyes. Really I just, I just love it. But mm -hmm. they didn't just make dolls. with the uh, glass eyes, they also made them without, and I think that these are also probably Kloster Vale store dolls. The modeling just seems too similar. There's, these two are similar to each other. When you look at them, can you see that they, they may actually be the same model? Looks like they are. I believe they are. So you have one in Bisque and one in China. This one has a nose bonk. Mm. It happens. I mean, 125, 130 years old, heck, yeah, you know, I would have a nose bonk. She fell forward and chipped her nose. Aww. This one has, I forget what this one has going on, something. Something, something. And Michael brought out a couple that I said, oh, they need to go here from, mm -hmm. that I think are in the same family. Yeah. In fact. Oh, yeah. 
look at that. To totally. Right? Yeah, totally, indeed. Yep. And this one, does this one have the brown eyes? Yes, brown eyes is often really something you pretty. see in closet. Talk, if you like those two, talk to Michael. <laughs> Unusual. Now, oh, 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 you know something? You know, yes, go ahead. Well, All right, here's my bad guess. Okay. Simon und Halbig. Wrong. Wrong. Oh, that was the eyes on that one. No. Okay. Nev never mind. <laughs> but you kept guessing another name before, and I kept saying, eh, and what was Kling. it? Kling. Yeah. That was Kling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of these. They're all Klingy. Now, let's take the big girl. Now, this girl Ouch. had, at one time, had some a lovely garland of, a, of applied leaves and flowers. And when I got her, somebody, it, they were, they'd all been gone, and somebody had tried to recreate it in, like, Fibo or something, and mm. I took it off because it was gross. <laughs> but the head itself is gorgeous. Yeah. It's too bad about this. Yeah. Maybe I could send her to Carl Armstrong and you have might. him do a little thing there for me. Uh, but she's got beautiful, you know, glass brown eyes, pierced ears, this little cute, cute little ruffled collar with a pink bow. And here she has, the way the Kling did their model numbers, 141-10, 10 being the size. Uh, their model numbers were lower than ABGs. Mm. So that is definitely a, a Kling doll. Beautiful. And not at all common either. Mm. This model you will sometimes find uh, amongst the Kling dolls, the, the bald one. She's very nice. She's a little earlier than the other one. She's simply marked with a seven, would have a wig. She has some nice earrings, which I haven't stolen yet, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she has, I think she has a bonk somewhere over there. Oh. And she also has a little chip by her eyes. And one of her eyes are gone a little wall-eyed too, I think. But She's alas, we have a, issues sometimes. Yeah, everybody has issues. Speaking of pretty girls, though, too bad, too bad, too no. bad, so sad, right? Beautiful cling head, pierced ears. Well, they kind of pierced all the way through. She has this gorgeous band with pink bow. She had at one time some kind of decorated shoulder plate that's gone away. Was Kling more well known for having more of the decoration? And they were known for using applied decorations. Applied decorations. That really was a thing for them. Yeah. Uh, like that bow on that one. And yeah. if you see that, that's often a sign that it's a Kling. This one's kind of hiding back here. This is an unusual oh. model. I don't know if those eyes are original or not, but they're like gray. I'm going yes. They made gray eyes. It's, yes, I would say yes. It's unusual. Uh, she has a black bow on top of her hair and kind of you know, straighter hair than you usually see. And then you have the model number here. One, I think that's one five six dash six. So you can see that she's had a head bonk there. Yeah. Alas, uh, she has a slightly open, closed mouth too. So even you know, if you say, oh, you know, that one's a busted doll. Well, now you know it exists and you could look for it. Right. This one is one I have never seen in this hair color before. This one is badly damaged, but be, yeah, I, mo more of the head fell apart on the way over. But this was a later doll because it has the Kling bell mark. Mm. To model 245, it's marked Germany, and that's going to mean that it's like after 1891, I think that was the McKinley Taft Act. So that's after they started having them marked with the, the company, I mean the, the country name. Poor thing though, is, is really uh, very badly damaged. And now this girl, also a cling, and again, you have the model number 417 and a size eight, and she has a lovely twist of hair going up in there. Pierced ears again. She has had a restoration, it's not that great. Mm. 
I would almost rather see the damage personally. I mean, I don't mind seeing it. I, this is one that I think may be a cling. It'd be earlier than the others. It's almost a variation on the waterfall here, Styler. It is. Yeah. It is. So this is a, another debunk bell question. Yes, ma'am. When they have these more sloped shoulders, does that <laughs> indicate it might be earlier? It, to my, fe it... my feeling is that it might be a bit earlier, ah, yes. Okay. Now we have a couple more that I haven't touched on. I really want to talk about these. So Aunt Coleman is the one who was able to suss out who made these dolls. And I haven't uh, done the research she has on it, but the company name is MERS, M-E-R-Z, something that is not at all well known. But apparently uh, they made these dolls. This, you know, kind of Countess dagmar kind of thing was often attributed previously to Kling, but uh, she found proof that it was not. And they very much like to have these decorated shoulder plates and, you know, very detailed dolls. And, complex hairstyles. And I only have a couple more here. These are fairly, well, this first of all is a reproduction and it's ceramic as opposed to hard-fired porcelain. And the reason I have it here, I don't know who made it, is it has what they call crazing and I don't know if the camera can pick that up or not. And it can be said that often if you see crazing like that, it can be an indication of a, a ceramic reproduction. However, here is an antique head, a fairly common one actually, and it has crazing. So. Nothing is 100% right. with dolls. You can't say they always do this or they always do that. Right. There's always exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Unfortunately. It really is a guessing game so it, much. It is a guessing Identification game. Identification time and expertise. Here's another one that's an unknown. I have a whole family of dolls I think it might be related to, but I don't know. I'm still working on it. I'm yeah. still working on it. So a lot of these identifications are works in progress you know and you have to remain flexible and and you have to be to educate my friend Belen and she teaches me about other things that I <laughs> like <laughs> trolls and Madame Alexander and Sasha. and, you, and you educate me on China yes and, and I that, have a new appreciation and it's that kind of sharing that really makes our hobby so much fun. Absolutely. And we want to share with all of you out there in World Doll Day. Thank you, ladies. We enjoyed it. Bye bye. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.